Hello everyone, I am Aisul Joy Ching from BitLab 1A and for today, I am going to discuss the communication flow and process. Communication came from the Latin term communicare which means to share. So what do we mean by that? Of course, it is the process of sharing your thoughts, ideas, experience, feelings between two or more persons. It is act of conveying meaning to a person or group of people using a mutually understood symbols, gestures, behaviors, and semiotic rules. Okay, so for example, when your teacher done discussing his or her lesson, they will going to ask you, Do you have any question, class? And you all gonna do? So basically, the teacher would assume that you don't have any questions and you clearly understood the lesson based from your gestures. Another example is when your friend asks you, is everything alright? And then you do this, your friend will assume that you are okay. Communication plays a significant role in a day-to-day -day basis since it is used to persuade, inform, entertain, and motivate. Note that it is important to develop variety of skills depending on its purpose as well as to know how to interpret conversation and information coming from others. Let's now move on to the communication process. It is consists of the sender, message, transmission, recipient, receiver, and a feedback. It is the individual or group that starts the communication and the one who's making the attempt to convey a message is known as the sender. It is the individual who imparts their ideas, wisdom, information, and experiences. While message pertains to the data that is being communicated from the sender to the receiver, note that encoding is the process of creating a message. Transmission is the medium by which the sender will convey their message to the recipient. Recipient is the method by which the individual interprets or makes meaning of the message. It is also known as decoding, and it represents how our brain interprets the message. While a receiver is the person who receives the message and decodes it, the recipient must interpret the words into thoughts, analyze those thoughts, and decide how to reply to the sender. And lastly, feedback. Feedback is the information, answer, or reaction that a message's recipient provides to its sender. It is the process of pointing out areas in which someone has to do better. Constructive critique or advice on how to make a performance or product better offered to someone. Body language and head nodding are examples of non-verbal indicators that can be used for this. For better understanding, let's have an example. As you can see, our sender is the manager who has some positive news for the receiver, who is his employee. So... How would the manager would send the positive news to the employee? He chose to tell her by encoding the message for a promotion since he wanted to tell her right away. The message transmitted through email and the receiver used one of her five senses, which is sight, since in this case it is in a text form. The recipient will interpret the message that was provided to her and she will decoding it to understand what is said to the message. After finishing her interpretation of the message, she felt happy of what she received. And then, the recipient would consider what she would say in her feedback to the boss. Now you know how the communication process works. But, I have a question for you. Hmm... Do you know how to achieve an effective communication? Well, if you don't know how, you may have an ineffective communication. Many miscommunication or conflicts can also result from ineffective communication. This can involve committing errors or failing to finish duties correctly, experiencing emotional distress, starting conflicts, 
are distancing from other people. When there is a breakdown in communication, staff members may not know what has to be done. Employees may perform someone else's work while missing their own if there is a lack of information regarding their tasks. The quality of work can also be negatively impacted by poor communication about task execution. These issues are frequently caused by a failure to consider the demands of the audience, a lack of satisfactory feedback systems, or linguistic and cultural obstacles. And of course, we don't want that, right? But don't worry, we can avoid that because we have principles of communication. We have seven principles of communication. The first one is principle of clarity. By being clear, you may be confident that your audience will comprehend what you meant to say. It clears up any misunderstandings and maintains everyone's understanding. If your message content is unclear, your audience won't comprehend what you're saying. The second one is the principle of attention. The message must grab the recipient's attention in order for communication to be successful because people differ in terms of behavior, focus, emotions, and etc. They could react to the message in different ways. The third one is the feedback. People give insightful information on their behavior, performance, and impact. Feedback gives a path forward for development, whether it is compliments for a job well done or helpful criticism target at improvement. And the fourth one is informality. While informal communication is equally vital as formal communication, Formal communication holds a major position in the communication channels. Informal communication is effective in overcoming certain difficulties that formal communication is unable to address. The fifth one is principle of consistency. It guarantees a message that is coherent and clear, which is essential for audience engagement. Building trust and cultivating positive relationships can be facilitated by establishing and adhering to a communication plan. Maintaining a consistent style and tone threatens important decisions and establishes a recognizable brand image. The sixth one is the principle of timeliness. For communications to be understood and acted upon in order to accomplish their goal, they must be sent at that right moment and with the right amount of impact and urgency. And the last principle we have is the principle of advocacy. This suggests that the data must be accurate and comprehensive in every way. Insufficient and incomplete information ruins relationships and causes delays in taking action. Communication and communicator efficiency are also impacted. Now you know what those principles of communication are. Do you know that it is important to know the principles of communication? It is because to guarantee that the message are understood and taken action upon in order to accomplish their goal, communication should be done at the right time and with the right amount of impact and urgency. It ought to be feasible and distinguish between import and urgent information and to comprehend the duration of any activity. When these components are used appropriately, social interactions improve and people feel more comfortable interacting with others in a social setting. These advantages might be crucial resources for landing a career or creating enduring bonds with others. In essence, this principle is about appreciating that even in large groups, you're addressing individuals. With diverse levels of understanding and ability and differing natures and attitudes. And that is all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned and gained some knowledge from me. Bye-bye!